this tutorial I am going to show you a few tricks in cutting out hair and this was the image that I created to demonstrate that uh, with a little play on words really with the barbershop and the sheep I thought it was quite apt but the idea is that I will be able to show you how I would go about cutting out the hair on the sheep which is basically the same method that I'd use in cutting out human hair other animal hair uh, Really there's, there's a whole lot of things you can do with this, even in cutting in grass and other things like that. So I'm going to show you how I did this step by step so that you can do it too. So to start with, I'm going to take the mask off the sheep. So at the moment, uh, we've got the finished mask on there. So I'm going to disable that just to show you what was in the background here. I'm not going to take away the extra shadows and dodging and burning that I've actually overlaid on this image because that's something for another tutorial. I really just want to focus on the cutting out. So this is the sheep. This is the image of the sheep as it was except for the hairdo. So I'll take the hairdo off for now. We can just pop the hairdo back on. That was made out of several different layers as well. We're going to take the hairdo off so that I can show you how I cut this sheep out. Now this sheep was not photographed in front of a green screen, which is another method of extraction that I often use. This sheep was actually on the run. He was escaping at my uni farm and he was being chased. He was on the run and he was having a great time. So I snapped a few shots of him. I wasn't even ready for it. So. Essentially, the shot itself isn't perfect. There is some blur on the sheep there, just a little, but I wasn't too worried about that because it was looking like he was walking up and going to the barbershop anyway. So I thought I liked this shot, I liked the look on the sheep's face, so I used this one. Now the thing that we need to do to cut the sheep out, when you use tools like Magic Wand Tool, for example, and you try and select different areas. You can keep adding to it using the magic wand tool. And while from a distance, it might actually look like it's choosing the right sections there. When you start working closer in, you'll notice that it's very boxy. It doesn't give you a nice clean sort of uh, hairline and you know if you look at this sheep here okay so I'm just going to zoom up here so you can see the detail there is a lot of fine hair there there is little pieces that you you want to actually showcase these fine pieces of hair and the, the difference there you don't want a smooth cut so you could use the pen tool and you could go around but it would take a really long time to do this, a really long time, and you would still probably need to fix it up afterwards. So the pen tool's not the ideal way either to do it. Another tool that people might try and use is the magnetic lasso tool. And you can also draw around edges. Now if it's a really clean edge, if it's a really sharp edge, that'll work. But around the sheep, there's just so much detail, it's not going to pick that up. So the magnetic lasso tool is not ideal either. I would use the lasso tool to cut out very quickly around my subject and to check whether it fit into my scene. But to get a fine edge, you, you can't go back again. So the pen tool's great because you can take away points and you can add points, but once you've drawn something with the lasso tool, you can't go back and fix it up and fix up the little points too easily. There are, there are ways, but um, it's not ideal either. So, this sheep. How would I cut this sheep out? Alright, I'm going to zoom back out. I am going to delete my layer mask on my copy of my sheep. And I'm going to show you how I did this. The tool that I would use to cut 
the sheep out of its surroundings is actually uh, a layer mask. Layer masks are powerful. You can do so much with them. Now I've created a layer mask here and at the moment it is white. Now what I would do firstly is I want to get very quickly get rid of that background. So I would choose quite a hard brush uh, and something that is quite large in size too and quickly 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 now I'll turn the flow up to a hundred percent so I don't need to go over it more than once quickly going over the background it doesn't matter if I accidentally go over a section of the sheep I can go back again by pressing X and keep going so very quickly masking around my sheep just to leave a bit of my edges there doesn't have to be perfect it's just to get an idea all right then the next thing I do is I zoom in and I will choose a different brush now I've got a lot of different brushes loaded here, some that I've created myself, some that I've downloaded, some that I've purchased. So the, the amount of brushes that you can get are phenomenal. Now I'm going to use one of the brushes here that's actually not hair, but for the sheep, it's quite helpful. First, it's foliage. Now I'll make some adjustments to my brush so that I can work with it here. At the moment, this is what it looks like if I use it on my mask. So it's got some slightly rough edges and, and that kind of works. If I start running up and down here, it gives me the little divots to make it look like the sheep was actually there. So it's cutting in and out with the shape that it is, with the shape of this brush. But it's replicating the same section. It's not moving. So if I keep going over this, it's going to start looking very, very repetitive. So what we want to do is adjust our brush. So if we go to our brush presets here, shape dynamics. Now I have a brush, a special art brush, which actually enables me to turn my pen and it turns the brush. And that, that works really well, but that is a special Wacom brush that you need to purchase. So I'll turn that off. And first of all, I'm going to add a little bit of size jitter so that the size of it changes a little bit. Then the angle jitter. And what's going to happen is when I keep going up and down with my brush, the brush is going to change. So you can stamp, you can do a bit of drawing with it so you can drag it along. And you can stamp again. Now what happens if you go over a section that you didn't want to? You can make the brush bigger, smaller, so more refined in the finer haired edges. And to do that you can see the shortcuts that I'm pressing to go larger and smaller there. So the brackets, the square brackets. Now I just press X and I can paint back in. So the mask the power of the mask is that you can go back and forth, back and forth, and refine, refine, refine your edges. So you don't want too many divots up near the nose. The same with here the ears because it's actually quite a straight line there. Now you could go back to the other brush. So you can actually go back to a, maybe a soft edge brush, make the hardness up to something like say 35, 36% and go back over here and get those edges that are not as patterned and just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Okay, but then going back to the hair, and I'll bring back a little bit more here too. 
Going back to the hair, we go back to our original brush. Now, if we go back up the top here in our brush selection, here are the most recently used brushes. We don't want to go back and choose that brush again that I chose originally because it hasn't saved my settings. But if we go here and choose my most recently used brush, I can go back and it has the same jitter on it that it did before. So it's saving it. So we can go back. Now, if I keep tapping, it moves the brush around and gives it that variation. And if I just paint or draw sort of color, I can get rid of the rest. Now for this too, you want to start off with your flow, your opacity up 100%. But what you might end up doing just to refine your edges there too, is to bring that flow down, even bring the opacity down a little bit and draw in and out so that you can create a little bit of haze on the edge because this sheep did have some soft bits of hair coming up. It had, so you can see softer bits, harsher bits. So you don't really want to have a really, really strong, fine edge there. So by bringing the opacity up and down, bringing the flow up and down and just going over it again, once you get to the, towards the end of your original initial cutout, you're bringing, you're making it a little bit finer and a little bit more realistic. So I would continue to do this all the way around the sheep. So again, I'm going, bringing my flow up, bringing my opacity up so that I can go around the sheep. Firstly, a very quick color over and then some stamping to bring in some variation as the jitter changes and a bit more drawing and you'll get quick at it. You know, you do need to go right around the animal in this case because it's a sheep and it's covered in hair. But if you've got a human, you're only working, you're only doing this part of it on the human's hair. So it really doesn't take a long time. And the benefit is that you're not going back and forth with your different extraction methods, trying to refine the hair. You're actually just, you're really controlling your image. You're controlling your cutout to look how you want it. Now, should you want to extend something, all you need to do is you can create a new layer. So a new layer here, I'll zoom up there so you can see what I'm talking about. So creating a new layer here, I call it a stamp layer. And what I would do here, I'll zoom back out again, is I'll grab my stamp tool, just a normal soft edge brush there. And I'll grab some of the sheep's hair from over here. Now make sure that you've got it set to current and below. So what me that means is that the stamp tool is going to pick up what is on that layer as well as what's below that layer. So we're wanting to pick up the sheep's hair. And we can go over it like this. Now at the moment it looks a bit weird. That's okay. What we're wanting to do is extend the hair area so that when we cut around it, we've got some extra hair to play with. So this is a good way of doing it if you're finding, oh, it's, it's not really giving me a smooth edge or you want to extend the hair out. Now you would put another layer mask on there. So clicking the square with the circle. Invert it, Command I. So it's disappeared. And go back to your brush tool, go back to your, we'll call it sheep hair brush here. And you can actually then add a bit more tail if you wanted to. In this case, I didn't want to, but I'm just showing you that so that you know you don't have to be stuck with just what's there. So this can work really well if you're cutting someone into grass. You know, you've composited them, there's grass, there's fine grass in front of them. You can bring back some grass in front of them by using this method. I'll turn that, that one off. We'll zoom back out again. So here we are, we've, we've done some of the hair there. I don't need to go around the whole thing because you do get the picture. I will turn my copy off and turn my original back on. 
and my extra hair, same method here. I used a stamp tool to add some hair up there and I added the rollers in. So there we have the finished sheep. It's been cut out, I've added shadows, I've dodged and burned, I've done a whole lot of other things. But I was able to cut the sheep out and retain the texture of the wool and make it look like they're right there without a halo around them, without having a horrible straight line around the sheep. It's bringing in texture. So that is a really, really simple way to cut out hair, to cut out wool, to cut out grass, all those sort of things using layer masks and to refine your edges. I hope that helped. I know it that I use this all the time, so I'm sure it will. And I look forward to seeing what you create with this method. Mm -hmm.